The Wire seems like a really good show. I should probably just shut up and watch it. You can if you want, or not, or you can play Earthbound. You know, this game where we have simulated noise. Why would I watch an extremely well-regarded critical sensation of a television show when I could play this? I don't know, man. For the I, 20... I tell you. Ninth time. I've never had more fun than I'm having right now by playing this game. <laughs> and in order to have fun while playing this game, we need to invent a machine called the Phase Distorter. That doesn't sound too hard. I feel like I can manage that. You have a cat. I brought a guest with, with me <laughs> to today's episode. Famous physicist, Dr. Katzenberg. Dr. Yeah. Bumbles Katzenberg. He's here to work on the phase distorter. Oh. Well, that lady didn't want our autograph. Now he's eating this, the edges off of a piece of foam core that I have in the corner there. But it's okay, because I don't need that foam core for anything. Outstanding. Yeah. Okay, so... Recall... For a minute... What we're doing. Because I can't remember. Um, so last regale time... Regale me! I'm not gonna regale you if you keep interrupting me, motherfucker. You interrupted me. I... I'm the king. It wasn't finished. What? Fuck you. This, this is terrible. Tell me what's happening. Uh. Do it. Come on. You're gonna be quick. You gotta keep up. Shut up. Idiot. Last time we did that Stop. stupid maze thing, and we talked to that nutcase, and uh, the sage guy, and got Naomi back. So we came up to this dude's office. This po Pokey's, Pokey's Tower. Yeah, we went to the top, we got Naomi back, because the, uh... Also, uh, uh, it, it entertain the audience for just a minute. I'm gonna deal with this cat. This cat is... Go, is, go skin that cat. There's numerous ways. Having a ter terrible time for some reason. But I, I will be right back, entertain the audience while I'm gone. Roger. People of the audience, as we have previously discussed, I have nothing to say to you. I don't know who you people are. What's going on? What? I'm just gonna save the game, and, uh, we're just gonna chill. Just be cool, baby. I have no problems. Oh, for God's sake. Enjoy this, I'm gonna have a sip of my wine. People, you can't get this anywhere else. Nowhere else on the internet will you find a ringing telephone and a fat man pouring himself a glass of wine and then drinking it for your audio pleasure while you stare at a static screen showing nothing. That was the Mother worst act Christ. I've ever heard. Thank I want God my money back. back. Because this phone <laughs> started can't ringing, hold it. and I'm about to lose control. What, you have hands? Just... Come on, man. It's Orange Kid. Thank God. Nobody oh, cares. yeah, Apple Kid. The last thing that happened in the last episode was Apple Kid. Yeah, he gave us a ring. Done came up. Oh. He's working on the phase philosopher or whatever. I'm still working on the way to change. Oh. Well, you just. Keep at that, Orange Kid. He called us to tell us that. That he was doing nothing. No, that has some meaning. We there's an egg theme. My response to this is just to scream the word "fuck" into this microphone. I'm not going to do I'm it out of respect out of... for you, Andrew. 
How long have we been in Foresight? I'm ready to leave. What the? Get I'm off my nuts! I'm ready to get to... Oh. Five... A man five just, Bella. A man just forced three children into a van. That's... That's Eagle Land, man. A van that it is has the wonkiest perspective. <laughs> the front is sort of curved over to the side. I don't even know. I don't even know. Even when it's moving so like exactly 90 degrees to the left, it's still in three quarters view. This bridge has a lot of suspension. I like that even when we're on a bus, they make us watch every single one of these stupid things. Okay, here was- remember the desert? Remember how fun that was? Yeah! When you Wait. had to- No. wet towels? Oh. Why couldn't we find, Drugs. like, the heat suit? Oh, man. Like, in Super Metroid, that just makes us not have to deal with that bullshit. Remember the tunnel with the ghosts in it? Yeah, I remember it. I have oh, a gun right those... here. Oh. Little saucers. Oh. Remember this other tunnel? I'm... What? I don't... I don't want to remember. Wow. All that was between three and four side? Yeah. I think we took the bus to wow. three before as well. Or to four side, rather. Or to that, to that desert. At least. I'm so sorry, we couldn't do more for you. Yeah, go fuck yourself, buddy. <laughs> Just think of our songs or imagine the Runaway 5 and realize that everything could be way worse. <laughs> far, far away. Let's, let's keep it that way. Yeah. Look, look, I'm, look, man. I took out this restraining order. You gotta stay at least 600 pixels from me at all times. <laughs> look, man, don't make me call the police. I got this bat. I don't want to have to use it. <laughs> <laughs> they showed the bus backing up and then just snapping to the right. Ah, uh, it's the best bus. Just, just getting in this bus causes whiplash. <laughs> Truly impossible levels of acceleration were reported today. Oh god, why are we here again? Uh, I don't know, I'm gonna what go talk to the to hand guy, because... At least this game that gives you no direction or help or information at all has the, there's the common decency to let you pay some lunatic $75 to tell you what to do. Normally I pay ladies $75 so I can tell them what to do, but, you know... In the absence of that, I'll just make a really, really late. Oh, hey, they're only 60 bucks here. I, I smell an arbitrage camp. opportunity. A silver flying contraption of some sort crash landed in the graveyard. Okay. Graveyard. Yep. Did. So here's my question. In a, in a zombie apocalypse, okay. why is it always... Why does the virus affect everyone? Why... Why can't the virus only affect, like, one-third of all the population? Like, you know, the plague. In, um... The movie adaptation of... I Am Legend. As I recall, I think, like, only 10% of the population turned into the monsters? Or something? And then the, 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 the thing that set it off was a cancer cure. And the cancer cure, like, killed a significant portion of the remainder. And then the monsters killed virtually everyone else. Except for a handful of people who were immune. Hmm. Well, okay. But I, I, I would just think, you know, it, it'd be interesting if, if society didn't collapse. If, none, if all our institutions sort of remained and we, uh... We were able to deal with the zombies in a more or less Whoa, hold it. effective manner. There. Oh my god. That was it. That, 
Oh god. <laughs> Everything is coming together space. in a matter of seconds. Like pornography. Ew. Gross. See what I did there? Yes, but I wish you told me to put on my safety goggles first. Ass. It's a music box. Um. God, this machine sucks. Tell me. Please. I want to, I want the next portion of this game to happen on the moon. With absolutely no land features. Don't be an idiot. That's not related to what you said. I'm just saying, generally, don't be an idiot. Oh. Good advice. Given the option, choose not to From be an, an idiot. idiot. Wait. We're flying awfully close to the ground. Yeah, why did we, why did we fly up? all the way up to like 33,000 feet and then skim across the desert and then rise again? Who built just, this thing? Who's driving? Rob, is your truck? truck? Well, you must be crazy. Why are we going past Forside again? Fuck Forside. We were just here. And there we go. Great. This place sucks. Um, what were you saying before about the zombie apocalypse? Oh, I don't know. Some some crackpot theory about. But we've been here before. Wait, what? We broke something here. No, this, this is where we originally got this machine. We needed to take us oh. to Summers. Anyway, you were saying that's um. Oh. Oh yeah, it would just that it would be interesting if uh sort of our our typical institu societal institutions survive, and we were able to deal with the zombie menace in a more or less efficient manner, and maybe at the end of the story, dealing with just one zombie is uh, it's like really difficult. Because so often, it's you have to deal with, with hundreds of zombies uh, yeah. as one man, but uh, if, if each zombie were uh, in itself really uh, tough, and just dealing with one was, was a big issue. Have you ever seen Shaun of the Dead? No. Uh, you should, because it's really funny. It's, oh my Jesus Christ, what the what is that thing doing here? I remember him. I'm gonna climb into this pod. Whatever, let's do it. We didn't even climb in. I hate this game. <laughs> At least in at least in Chrono Trigger, they had the common decency to show you getting into the stupid instant sleep machine. This game is obviously not as advanced as Chrono Trigger. You're not as advanced as Chrono Trigger. I haven't seen any sort of time travel <laughs> mechanic yet. Oh, Jesus Christ, Doc! What the hell's wrong with you? Sharing a man's secrets like that—that that ain't right. What was I talking about? Oh, in, uh, in Shaun of the Dead, they show a society that has not... They don't go into the traditional um, zombie movie thing where it's like, man, this is the real monster and the real big threat. It's like, no, it's basically about fighting zombies. And then once things get bad, there's a deus ex machina that solves everything. And at the end, like sort of the closing, the, the denouement is the character's... Um, it's like shows how society deals with the zombies after the zombie apocalypse, and it's like they're being put to work in like supermarkets, like gathering up all the all the carts in the parking lot and stuff. And the main character, his friend who has become a zombie, is is like keeps him in a shed and he plays video games with him. He's got like a he's got like a bit in his mouth, so he won't try to bite people and stuff. It's it's real dumb, but it's well. That sounds like just about the worst movie ever. Yep. Yeah. I have successfully taken the piss out of your I, silly idea. I hate you. Speaking speaking of movies, uh, the other day, I uh, went to, was uh, with my class from, from school. We were filming uh, sort of marketing materials for the pro, uh, design research program. Mm -hmm. And uh, essentially we... Uh, had a bunch of questions and uh, speaking about 
you know, what our experiences are and what we think of the program sort of thing. You know, ma marketing sort of things. Yeah. But my uh, professor's son uh, was the one with the camera making the videos, and he is really into film criticism, and he makes movies that are, uh, you know, sort of in the vein of that those red letter media. Yeah. Uh, videos, you know, where, where like he's talking about a, a, a movie or something, but he also is cracking, like doing some like physical comedy and stuff at the same time. Yeah. Uh, but he and I got into a conversation about I, I had watched one of his videos, and in that video he argues that modern movie effects uh, have less of an effect because they're more realistic and uh, give you less, there's less divide between what you see and, and reality, and I want to, that, that seems like a more or less common opinion, that that modern computer generated effects are, are more, quote, realistic, and I want to know where people get that notion, what they see in computer graphics that, that equates to realism. That has nothing to do with the content, because the whole reason you use computer graphics is to represent something that's unrealistic. Yeah. You know? But I mean, like, that's the thing that you see is, uh, if, if you've seen any, like, um, trailers for that movie Elysium, there's, like, some scenes where, like, a... You can tell it's CGI, but only just barely. It's, it's like some kind of crazy future aircraft. It's got, like, big ducted fans or turbines on the end of its wings. It looks like a... like a, like a science fiction V-22. But it looks like you're like if that were just a little higher resolution, it like didn't, it were just a little bit more perfectly matched to the background. I could believe that they just they had just built some kind of giant machine to resemble a big aircraft, right? But you would only you would only ever believe that they that they built a, a model. You know, it, it, the distinction here between realism and uh, schematism, let's say. What is schematism? Is, well, I like, like the notion of uh, abstraction of uh, you, you represent things. Have you ever heard of the, the distinction between uh, representation and imitation? No. How you can, you can imitate something uh, in the sense that you attempt to fool people into believing a thing is really there when it's not or you can represent something that uh, something recalls the thing and uh, denotes it. It's, is it like the difference between like a caricature and a photograph? Well, because, but you would never believe that a photograph, you, a photograph would never fool you into believing a thing is really there because it's, it looks like a photograph. You know, you know what that is. You're aware of that uh, genre of or that uh, form of of, of uh, uh, image making, right? But so we we have a distinction between representation and, and imitation. We have a, a distinction between uh, realism and, and schematism. Now, realism. I mean, w w when I say the word realism, what what comes to your mind? Um, like if, if I if I said a painting was very realistic, what would you? Oh, uh, what would you think? Oh, my my first like thought would be like it's, would be like, photorealism would be the thing, and there would be like a painting that is very detailed and very finely shaded, so that it. Jesus Christ! That thing just did a hundred and sixty no, damage to me. God damn. Pho photorealism. Uh, n none of the objects in a photorealistic painting, I mean, you, you don't think they're real, uh, that it, it tricks you into believing that what is a pa what is a painting is actually a photograph, which is very different than, like, a realistic painting, you know? Uh, because the, they adopt f f the optics of photography... Uh, are different than the optics of the human eye. Right. So, the 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 uh, uh, scheme of representation in a photograph is 
quite distinct from uh, uh, the well, you you see in parallax first of all, and you and a camera does not work like that. A camera has a single point of uh, a spile, so certain things uh, the the background you know is blurred depending on uh, your level of focus and your uh, your d d focal distance and so forth. Uh, you know, but you know all that because you're aware of sort of the conventions of photo Oh my god. Yeah, what the fuck is that thing? Speaking of zombies. Yeah, ugh. Look at his little feet. <laughs> Look at that. Ew, he's a cute little mushroom monster. Why am I talking like this? This is kind of horrifying. <laughs> uh, oh dear, we're not doing a lot of damage to that thing. Awful. He's rolling oh, on the fire. No, there's a trick. You just have, have to find the trick. That's how it's been for this whole time. Yeah. There's gonna be one attack that you have that's gonna be me. Yeah, and I just happen to have fire gamma, so... Suck it! I think it would be freeze. He said... It said fire. I had rocks and spy on him. Oh, you bitch! Well, at any rate, I'm, 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 I've been kind of talking in circles, but to, to get to the point... Um. <laughs> a, a, to get to the a, point. A realistic. Three, fo three, fo three. Oh, Jesus, I've been drinking too much of this one. Three Sorry. solid Sorry. seconds Sorry. of Sorry. science. Fuck you. Science. Silence. Fuck. More science. <laughs> science. I said science again. Don't make fun of me. Anyway. The point is is that realism. The way we define it has nothing to do with real is with, with what is real. Right. You have to imagine. Okay. So, what 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 is what is truth? Truth is the correspondence between a statement and an observation. Right. So, or a reality. You know. Uh, so, in order to be real, a or to be realistic, a thing would have to accurately, uh, uh, correlate to something in reality. Now, if it did, if it did that, we would, we would simply believe that the thing is the thing in reality. Right. If it accurately represented it, and we would have no notion of the distinction between the two. Therefore, uh, I submit that the abstract or the schematic is more realistic than anything that, it, uh, that re we say to resemble, uh, things in reality, because those representations, uh, do not correlate exactly in all, in pretty much any regard. Hmm. If you took it sort of point for point, uh, correspondence, everything would be different. Every quality of it would be different. You, you, you would never match any of the colors exactly. Uh, you know, the fact that it would be a two dimensional thing, a painting, let's say, uh, as opposed to a three dimensional ob reality, you know, Point for point, everything about your representation would be different, and you would never fool anyone. Whereas, an abstract, let's say you had a, a red vase, and you painted a canvas entirely red, uh, it would resemble that red vase in more, if you went along all the points of possible resemblance, it would hit more of them than a, a, quote, realistic representation of the base. So, that said, the uh, visual effects in movies that are done by a computer are simply more... Uh, are, create an, a different reality or create a different representative scheme uh, that doesn't mirror anything in reality. Uh, whereas the more... Uh, schematic effects of, uh, you know, using other methods, uh, 
hit more of those of those points of resemblance. Huh. I guess it makes I, sense. I'm probably... Hold on, I, I think I've... Jesus Christ, I think there's a lot of damage. Um, it's it's like you're saying that, like, let, let, let's take a... I brought up Elysium earlier, and, and this, this this sort of, like, fictional aircraft they have in it. It looks real cool and real, real science fiction-y and badass. And so, you're saying, like, the special effects that create that aircraft enable us to... to it's not realistic because that CGI representation of an aircraft is not like a. It's not a thing proper and it doesn't bear a strong resemblance to like an observation. You would never be tricked into thinking that that thing was an actual aircraft that's actually dropping people off. But in the world that we're being presented, it's more, quote, realistic because it feels right. Like, it, it feels like it belongs, whereas an actual helicopter... But you don't know anything about this world. But, like, it's... it's Like, I, hmm. I, I'm saying that, that, that the movie is presenting a fictional reality, right? Or a, a fictional world in which uh, all sorts of these fantastic things are happening. Yeah. That there's no reason to suppose that in this world, some things don't just... don't just behave like claymation or something. Yeah. You know? Like, think of uh, in Star Wars, when uh, in Return of the Jedi, when, when Luke Skywalker falls down into the pit uh, in, in, in Jabba the Hutt's uh, like fortress, and uh, there's that monster at the bottom, and it's like a claymation monster. Yeah, it's all like you know? stop-motion animated or whatever. But y you've never seen that monster. You have no reason to suppose that monster doesn't look like that and behave like that. It's an alien monster. Right. You know, there's no reason to suppose that uh, it, it's like musculature and, and skeleton have any sort of analogy to the, the musculature or skeletons of creatures on Earth. Right, like, I mean... Well... But, but like, what if that monster moved it, instead of moving it, you know, approximately to... 24 frames a second and it looked kind of a little bit weird because of stop motion. Like, what if it moved at 5 frames a second and it was real janky? Like, wouldn't that take you out of the moment some? Like in that movie, if it were... Like, what if that, that effect... That effect is really good because that's an awesome movie. But like, what if that effect were just totally fucked and just didn't work at all and like resembled nothing? What if it were just like but, literally but made saying... of popsicle sticks? Point, point for point, it would re it would resemble reality more because it, it would it would re present fewer instances in which a a uh, comparison could not be made. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like in the moment when, when you're in that 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 movie watching mode, we're saying like you're saying people see what? a schematic and they accept it. Or your friend was saying that like they see this. The, the special effects help them build the movie, uh, like, help build this sense of suspension of disbelief more, right? Like, that was his, his theory well, about well, what, what realistic where, where does means. that come... Where does that come... You're coming to this movie with all sorts of preconceived notions of what you think this world should be, but why, why would you think a world should be one way? I don't know. Because of conventions, right? Right. Because of the con conventions of the representation. And so you're, you're already accepting, sort of a priori, this representative scheme that uh, e equates greater, um, greater frame rate to more realistic. So it's not correlating to any sort of features of reality. It's a, it's a matter of... Uh, of equating the frame rate to realism. That's why uh, in they they were able to market that new Hobbit movie as more as so great because it was filmed at 60 frames per a second and it 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 looks like nothing looks like that. It does look. Really it doesn't look weird. like anything. I've seen that. The movie looks fucked up. But um, 
Or, and, but again, like I say, it looks fucked up, but that's also because of convention. Because I've seen a million movies at 24 frames a second. But that was a movie at 48 frames a second comes along, and now I feel sick when I see it. But right, I, I see, but, I see but what you mean. Like, um, because it's part of the movie, the the representative mode of the movie. It's like we know what this is because it's at 24 frames a second. Yeah. Like it's that's we know to to see movies or, or we know how to interpret the sensations uh, we derive from movies because they all follow that convention. The convention of movies. You know what's interesting? Uh, another example of this exact phenomenon is that some, um... I read there recently, someone was, uh, was complaining about um, the reaction to the new Hobbit movie. I actually, I haven't seen it, but I've seen, like, clips and stuff of it. The higher frame rate looks... But whatever, um, people say it looks it looks cheap, and it's the reason it does that is because like TV cameras shoot at a higher frame rate than uh, than movie cameras do. Because movie cam movies have always been since the beginning like 24 frames a second, right? That's always yeah. been sort of the standard. But uh, camcorders and movie cameras have been shooting at or at, at TV cameras have been shooting at higher frame rates. And then like if you watch um, oh Jesus this motherfucker again. If you watch like a like, a, like if you watch like a panning shot or like a quick like rotation of the camera in like a soap opera on TV, yeah. it seems. You ever get that feeling like you're seeing footage that's too smooth, and you're just like, why does this this looks gross and weird? Why does it look like this? Well, no, it, 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 uh, 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 yeah, it, it always just, it, it looks too sharp. Yeah, it looks it looks like you filmed it on your home home video camera. Exactly, and you get this feeling like. People have learned to associate high frame rates with like cheapness and home video footage because of that. And I remember um, seeing some uh, some review of The Hobbit that was complaining that people said it was cheap because in the, in the sort of bizarre twists like higher fidelity and higher frame rate is associated with cheapness and, and suckiness because of exactly. Because it's part because of the, the convention. I mean, that's the scheme. Yeah, because we've learned, we we've, we've learned to interpret those those media on those terms. But I'm saying it's the same with vi same with visual effects. You know, yeah. it's like well, you're you're saying these computer generated graphics are are, are quote more realistic simply because. I mean, because you know? you're you're comparing them to your past. Like if you go back and watch. Compare the computer graphics of like the last Starfighter to. I keep bringing this up, but it's because it's, it's the last trailer I watched of like a of a high budget movie, like Elysium, where it's like, yeah, the model they're using in Elysium is has as ten thousand times as many polygons in it as the one they're using in the last Starfighter. Because the last Starfighter looks like shit, but it doesn't it doesn't look like shit. It, it just looks like a low poly three D model. Right? And right. we just learned to associate by conventions, like, yeah, more polygons and better shaders and animators trying to make the lighting on this thing look more like it ought to if this were a real physical prop is... Yeah, we, we, we call it realism, but it's not that it really resembles a real object anymore. Well, at any rate, my uh, uh, my professor's son, he's only he, he's he's seventeen. But, yeah. You know, he's a sharp kid. He's a sharp kid. He, good kid. Uh, good kid. At, at, at any rate, uh, he his argument was that it, it, it's it's very cold and mechanical looking, and uh, that it really takes takes the magic out of the movie. That part of movie magic is is the very idea that uh, it, it it is a it is a a piece of, of craft. Yeah. You know, that uh, it's part of the interpretive scheme to sort of understand how how things are done. Yeah. And uh, that, that I found, uh, you know, rather perspicacious. Uh, the idea that uh, sort of imaginative recreation is part of the, the viewing experience. And But, but I, I, I would go further and say that, well, Part of that imaginative, imaginative recreation is part of the realism of it. 
Like, it, it is more real. Uh, it's not more real to be, uh, to use computer graphics. It's simply a different scheme. Makes sense. And, uh, anyway. Oh! Rob Z. It's me. Oh, yeah. Earthbound. Tony. I'm collecting players' names for a school project. Players. Well, some of that cat man. I don't, I don't know what's the deal with that cat. Go talk to that cat man. Holding the controller, would you register your name, please? Don't spell your name wrong! Oh, fuck. Where the hell are we? Uh, B Summers. Barmasol. Barmasol. Oh, shit. Be Barmasol. <laughs> Be Hold on, just shut up a second. I've got a cunning plan. Oh, wait. What was the name of the guy from from Warhammer that <laughs> that had a lot of skulls? Be uh, Robo Gilliman. No, we're, we're B. Gordon Barbasol. Oh, perfect. <laughs> and they give you a lot of character slots. Yeah, I'm, I'm genuinely excited about this. This is awesome. <laughs> they only gave us... We, we had such a hard time coming up with character names because they only gave us like five letter slots. <laughs> B. Gordon Barbasol, famed political commentator. Um, but before I forget, because I'm... I've become properly drunk in the last, like, 15 minutes or so. Um... We're over 30 minutes. Also, fuck this game, I just gave you my name. Don't say thanks, game player. Thanks... Say thanks, B. Gordon Barbasol. God damn. I just told you my name. Shit. We are at... We are at 42 minutes, just to... Just to give you the... Yeah. Um... Fine, just fucking settle down, game. Uh, the thing I was gonna was gonna sort of hold forth about before I forget. Um, just fine, just fucking hang up the phone. Jesus, text box, get off my nuts. Jesus, uh, shitting, motherfucker. <laughs> Whatever. Just turn your phone off, yeah, just, man. Yeah, just shut that shit off. Just put that shit on vibrate and get off my ass about it. Leave a voicemail. Just leave a voicemail. You hit in on this call. You're gonna dismiss it. Just send a text message. Just stop the ringer. Just turn it off. You're in a movie theater. The movie I'm thinking of is Aliens. Because Aliens is is has virtually no computer effects at all. I mean has as a as a couple. There's there's some shit at like the the explosion at the end and you know, stuff that couldn't possibly be done with physical uh, practical effects, but like the, the power loader. If you remember that fight between the, the power loader and the queen with Ripley in the in the big big robot suit, and the power loader is that that like mech mech suit that she yeah. gets in. She, she like picks up a okay. container and carries it over somewhere, and then at the end she fights the queen with it. And um, you know, like uh, no, it would not be good if I took a break, Dad. I'm drunk. I'm not tired. Fuck you. Uh, like, the, like that movie, uh, the power loader is one good example. The alien suits. Like, how much less impact would that movie have if, instead of practical effects for all those dudes in rubber alien suits, they had, you know, CGI aliens, like in, in the more recent adaptations and stuff. That stuff is all... No, we're not like a boat ride creepy sailor man. Uh, I forgot how I was going to draw this back to our earlier fascinating conversation about um, special effects versus practical effects, but there's something like that movie in particular has just phenomenal practical effects and it I feel like there's never a moment in that movie where, where any part of it takes you out of it it's one of those really yeah. excellent movies that never takes you out of the moment I feel that way about the fifth element too. I know you don't feel the same way about the fifth element, but I feel like the fifth element. Well, oh, I, I think the fifth element has great. It's a great, like, effects and things. It's, it's like the, the. I feel like 
I don't think there's any part of the fifth element that ever takes me out of it. There's a couple of parts with like some 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 mediocre CGI and and stuff, but there's like it's all crafted yeah, that, into a thing that, that never bothered me. Yeah, it never takes but, you I out mean, of that that's, moment. That's, whether you like the that's moment. That's just the point I was making. Is that uh, it's not it's not that it's we're asking the wrong question. Yeah. It's not a matter of of which one is is more real or which one it's a different representational scheme yeah and how you can you can do things with computer effects that are will it won't take you out of the movie if they're done with with the right amount of craft yeah it's it's not about making it look more real it's about obeying uh Strictly obeying the code you've established in uh, for rep representing the things you're trying to represent, even if they don't look uh, like things that you might encounter in the real world, if if they all sort of obey the same rules and 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 so if they all obey the same representational scheme, it it won't take it, it'll be good. Whether you use practical effects or computer effects. As long as you don't do anything that's, like, jarring or weird. Like, it would be... It's it's really weird in the special editions of Star Wars when, like... You've got, like, practical effect, practical effect, miniature, miniature, in-camera effect. BAM! Like, out of nowhere, CGI for no reason. Yeah, You're like, what that, the fuck that's, is that? That looks weird. That's bad, because they're mixing representational schemes. Like, they have some things that move all wonky, like they're, like, claymation things, and then they'll, they'll yeah, they just plopped in a, like, yeah. a CGI effect, and that's like, what, that, that doesn't fit, because you've already established a scheme, but, well, yeah, at the same time, it's like when you don't. It's like this whole galaxy full, full of things, and you don't know what what yeah. should move I mean, what way. Or there's no reason for you to think, but you're, you're like you're you're establishing this visual language. It's like yeah, we're gonna have some stuff that moves at ten frames a second because fuck taking twenty four pictures of the fucking rancor for every second of footage we're gonna show of it because it's on screen for like five minutes because whatever we don't have that kind of money, but. Uh, like, yeah, like, every weird, giant, in-camera effect monster is gonna look a certain way. And it's bizarre when one of them moves at 60 frames a second and has a weird sheen to it, like it's not actually there and has been inserted by a computer. It's... Like, like you said, we have no reason to believe this, this world is, is a certain way, but it's like, when you keep... It's like it breaks this... We're dealing with a weird version of reality here. Everyone knows it. Everyone's watching a movie. And everyone is suspending their disbelief. It's like it's like, like if you change the rules on us. It's like, I have no reason to believe that a Rancor doesn't move at 10 frames per second. Because it lives in some bizarre alternate universe. It, it, but, if, oh, but if other oh. stuff moves at 6... Yeah, there's... I remember this oh. taxi thing. We're being... Uh, oh, there's a sign, too! <laughs> Ohio, Ohio Route 40. Oh Jesus, that's the worst it's route in the eyes. world. Uh, I, I believe that's Theta High Theta 40. <laughs> I'm gonna start referring to Ohio that way. I'm not. That's a lie. Thai. Don't two H's. Don't talk to me about Thai Theta. I went to that sorority house once, and I was. <laughs> Brutally murdered by the horse. Yeah, but but I, as you were saying, it, it, I mean, it, it seemed pretty weird if some things in this world moved at ten frames a second and others moved at sixty. Yeah, it's like that's sort of a weird thing for for uh, uh, like creatures all on one planet to do. Yeah. Also, I mean things. Things in the real world don't move at frames per second. Yeah. And I mean, of if, course, if, we, if, we know we're watching a movie, right? Like, but 
we choose to suspend our disbelief so we can get hyped up about the lives of people we know aren't real. Well. Yeah, but the, and the larger point is, is that it's not the difference between practical effects and special effects. It's a difference between representational schemes. And when you're mixing schemes, it's like mixing metaphors. Yeah. You know, how they always say, well, if you're going to use one metaphor, don't, don't change metaphors like mid-sentence or, yeah. or something. Uh, so, which we do all the time, probably have done many don't, times. During don't this video mix your metaphors before the hatch, idiot. That'd be stupid. What? Don't put all your metaphors in one basket. Under no circumstances should you ever... Circumstances? Look! I've had a bottle of wine, and I don't want to hear it. Motherfucker. Oh, God! Hi. My cab I'm is Sturcum. here, and my, my cab has a gun. Circumstances? Charles C. Circumstances. Oh, God, we get our name is... <laughs> B. Gordon Barbasol. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never work on this sound again. God, God damn it. No! Rob Z, wake up. I wonder if there are codes in this game where if you insert your- if you input your name as something, you get cheats. Or... I hope so. We may- we may have been able to look that up if we had even the smallest degree of foresight. <laughs> this game wouldn't be nearly as fun if it weren't so retarded. Lars has the bacon effect. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that represents paralysis. Because if you eat too much bacon, then you get really tired, and it's as if you were paralyzed because you fall right asleep. I choose to believe what you've just said. You you show a great deal of willpower there. <laughs> oh god, this thing is just beating Naomi to death. Oh, thank god. That was a disaster. That was a rough battle, man. We need to find a phone. Yeah, we need to find a... Sub Man, this world is full of museums. Where are you again? Uh, a place called Summers, which appears to be a resort town. Summers. Yeah. Let's, uh, remember by the hint guy, let's, uh, let's roll over to the hotel and find a place to sleep for the night and call our dad. Yeah. What the hell is- some money. Dude, look at, look at, uh, look at Lars right now. He's just, he's got those roller shoes. <laughs> Yo, I got my Healy strapped on tight, yo. What? What, motherfucker? Is that an ambulance? I will grind up your car if I goddamn well please. Damn. This better be an ice cream truck, because I'm about to fuck something what up. What does that this... sound? You hear that? It sounds like somebody's trying to contact me over the radio. You, you do hear that, right? Was I'm not going crazy. Make the sound with your mouth, dude. It, this is not the sort of sound I can make with my mouth. Do it. Is that coming from the game or not? I, I honestly don't know what sound you're talking about. Take your headphones off you and see if you can hear like a phone or something. No, no. It, it sounds like a bunch of little. It's like static, and then there's beeps. I think the static is probably coming from my microphone, and the beeps are probably the seagulls in the background of this song. It goes like... <sighs> is, it, is there... is it waves? Do we hear waves? I, I think it's waves and also seabirds. Oh, it sounds like, like you're listening to a, a message from space. Son of a it's bitch! Like barely coming through because there's a lot of static because it's traveled for millions of miles across the galaxy. Don't to reach you. Don't fuck with my mind when I'm place. drunk, Andrew. This is unacceptable. And of course, as soon as I say that, this game trips out and starts chugging. 
know it's going. Oh. Just, just get out of this. Just, just, just stop, just, just stop talking to this man. Just say fuzzy pickles and get the fuck out of here. Whatever. It's gonna I mean, nice if he like if he changed it up once in a while. He's been doing this for 29 episodes now. <laughs> it's fuzzy pickles every time. <laughs> What if, what if one time in this whole game he just said, just, 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 just say fuck, just say the f word. I don't care. Just <laughs> say something horribly offensive. It's just, it says like, Jews are the cause of all the wars in the world. Out of nowhere, it just well, that's pulls not offensive. out. That's just a fact. Well, yeah. I mean, of course. But I mean, you know, the liberal media didn't want you to know that, Andrew. America. Comma, the brave. Kyle Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, the morning's headlines. Let's read what happened in... on it. People reported missing one after another in our city, in our sister city. Oh, crap. 